divine assistance is available Inapatikana. but divine assistance is not automatic Haiji moja kwa moja tu. All the blessings of God are available to all the children of God. But they are accessible by keys of the kingdom. Jesus said, I give unto your keys of the kingdom. It is the keys of the kingdom when they are applied that gives you access to the blessings of the kingdom. So the blessings of the kingdom are not automatic. They are available to all the children of God. But they are accessible by keys of the kingdom. In one of the keys of the kingdom that gives you access to divine help, to divine assistance, is humility. The ability Uwezo, to acknowledge utambua, that without God, bila mungu, you cannot do anything substantial. Pata la faida. What is your humility? The ability nini, uweza, to acknowledge utambua, that without God, bila mungu, you cannot do anything substantial. Lenye faida. What is your humility? Total submission. To the instructions of God. Total obedience. Complete obedience. To the commandments of God. Now, the commandments of God is an order. Is an order from God to you. It is not optional. It is mandatory. You cannot retreat from it. Neither can you ignore it and enjoy the blessings of God. The commandments of God is an order from God to you. It is mandatory. It is not optional. You cannot retreat from it and you cannot ignore it and enjoy the blessings of God. So it is total complete obedience to the commandments of God. Now the commandments of God are not optional. They are mandatory. What is obedience? What is humility? It is total submission to God. Total submission to God. God, anything you want me to do, tell me. Anything you don't want me to do, tell me. Total submission to God. So humility is a requirement for you to access the help of God. James 4, 6. For God giveth more grace. For it is written, He resisted the proud, but giveth more grace, more help to the humble. Inside grace, you have the help of God. Inside grace, you have the divine assistance of God. Inside grace, you have the aid of God. He resisted the proud, but he giveth more help. He giveth more aid. He giveth more assistance to the humble. So humility is a requirement for you to secure the help of God. In 1 John 2, 16, I've been showing you how pride manifests. In 1 John chapter 2, Verses number 16. First John 2, 16. Are you there? Let's read verse 16. For all that is in the world, the last of the flesh, the last of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but 
is of the world. Let me read the amplified version for better understanding. First John 216. For all that is in the world, the last of the flesh, which is craving for sensual gratification. The last of the eyes, greedy longings of the mind, mind. everything you see you want, the last of the eyes, everything you see you want, your life is ruled by the last of the eyes, you want this cloth, you must get it, you want this shoe, anything you see on somebody else, you want it. Last of the eyes. Last of the eyes. Greedy longings for the things you see. Anything you see, you want it. Anything you see, you want it. You see a hairstyle, you want it. You made your hair yesterday, but you've seen another one today. You change it tomorrow. After tomorrow, you see another one. You change it. That means your resources are being spent on the last of the eyes. You see a new cloth. You have to. You have to go for it. Some people even have better character. You borrow cloth to put on. That is a terrible character. Last of the eyes. You cannot afford. But you want to put it on. So you even borrow. Then when you are ironing. It gets burnt. You have to pay. Last of the eyes. Anything your eyes see, you are mad. You want it. You cannot have peace. Your husband will not have peace until you get it. The last of the eyes. Your life is ruled by what you see. You want it. The Bible says, such kind of behavior, it is of the world. It begins with all this, for all that is in the world, for all that is in the world, the last of the eyes is in the world. So everything you see you want, you are behaving like the eaten. As a man, you want to go for what they call Rorasho, or you want to go and book a lady you want to marry, you now borrow suit. That is nonsense. You want to paint a picture of who you are not. Be who you are. If they agree, they agree. If they refuse, they refuse. You borrow suit. You borrow shoe. You go present yourself. And then maybe the suit you borrowed is Italian suit. When they look at you, they put dowry half a million. And my friend, you cannot even afford 15,000. But the problem is the suit you borrowed. Last of the eyes. Last of the eyes. May you be delivered from this thing in the name of Jesus Christ. Some families, husbands don't have peace. Because of the last of the eyes. Whatever their wives see, they want. You just made the hair yesterday. You see another one today. In the evening, my husband. I just saw one good hairstyle. It's new in the market. Your head is not new. Your hair is not new. You trouble everybody. Nobody can have peace. If the husband says no, una fura. The whole house, nobody has peace. Just because of a hair you saw. And your husband did not give you money to make it. Because of the last of the eyes. In the last of the flesh, we have gossip. 
have slander. Your body cannot have peace until you bring somebody down. Until you paint somebody wrongly. In the last of the flesh, we will have gossip. You have slander. You have malice. You just take matatu from here to Lanet. Just to take gossip. And then when you come back, you are relieved. It's like that thing is poison to you. Until you download it, you don't have peace. Last of the flesh. Then you have the pride of life. The Bible says, all these things is not of the Father, but is of the world. The pride of life. What is the pride of life? This is self-exaltation based on achievements. The pride of life. self Exaltation based on achievements. Self exaltation based on achievements. The pride of life. This is for people that have achieved something tangible in their lives. People that have achieved something tangible in their lives. God, you know. Those days, I had time. But you know now, I have a business to run. I'm busy. I don't have free time like I used to have. Pride of life. You have something tangible. There is something you have achieved. There is something that God has brought into your life. And now whatever God has brought into your life has become a priority. Has taken the place of God. Now you think what God has brought into your life it can, it can protect you. It can preserve you. It will make you happy. It will make you comfortable. It will meet all your needs. So you don't need God, the way you needed him before, the pride of life. God brought things into your life. He brought money. He brought property. He brought business. Now, your love has shifted from God to the things God brought. Now that you have things, you think you don't need God. You don't need him as much as you needed him before. Now you are relying on your properties. You are relying on your assets. You are relying on the money which God brought. Now your heart, your heart has shifted from God to things. From God to money. From God to property. From God to business. The love the love you had for God has now shifted from God to the things, to the achievements, to the job, to the business, to the money. That is the pride of life. Self-glorification of the obvious achievements or the obvious results you have. Now that you have these things, you think you don't need God again. You don't need him. Now the things become like your security. You put your trust on the things. Now you think the things can protect you. The things can make your life comfortable. The things can defend you. Now the heart that was in God has been shifted to the things. The love that was for God has been shifted to the things. That is the pride of life. It is idolatry to shift your heart from God to things. 
It is idolatry to shift your love from God to things. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 2 and Jesus was warning the churches don't allow the pride of life to take over your life you look at the bank account say well you're I'm safe look at the bank account say well I can solve any problem Answered all things, but not without God. Not without God. Verses number four, or let's begin from verses one. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, right. This thing say did that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand. Who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works. And thy labor. And thy patience. How thou canest not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say the apostles. And are not. And your father them liars and as born and as patience and for my name's sake you have labored and you have not fainted nevertheless I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works which has these works the works of love do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place except Thou repent. Let me read the amplified version. Verses 4 and 5. But I have this one charge to make against you. You have left abandoned the love that you had at first. You have deserted me. Your first love. Remember then from which heights you have fallen from the love of God. Repent. Change the inner man to meet God's will and do the works. Which works? The works of love you did previously when first you knew the Lord or else I will visit you and remove your lamp stand from its place unless you change your mind and repent. Jesus is sent to this church. You have Abandon me. You have deserted me. You no longer love me the way you used to love me. There is a day you love me. And it is that love for God that lifted them. It is that love for God that prospered them. It is that love for God that committed God to change their lives. After their lives changed, after they prospered, after they succeeded, after they became comfortable, they shifted their love from God. They shifted their love from Jesus to the things. He says in verses 5, Amplified Version, Remember then from what heights you have fallen. 
Remember from what heights you fallen. Uliangukha. The things, the works of love that you used to do, you are no longer doing them. You have abandoned me. You have deserted me. You no longer love me. You now love the things I have brought into your life. That is idolatry. Shifting your heart from God to the things that God has brought into your life. That is idolatry. And it is the pride of life that makes you to shift your heart from God to the things. To shift your love from God to the things. Pride of life. Now you are putting your trust on the things you have, on the assets, on the businesses, on your career, thinking that these things will be able to do what God used to do. The pride of life. Thinking that the things can replace God. Thinking that the things God has brought into your life will do what God used to do. He says in verses 4, but I have this one charge to make against you that you have left, abandoned the love that you had at first. At first, at first you loved me. You did the works of love. It is the works of love that committed God to shift their level, to prosper them. It is the works of love that committed God to prosper them. After they prospered, they began to walk in the pride of life. I have this. I have this. I am comfortable. I have money. I can solve problems. So you now think the things God brought will be able to do what God used to do. That is the pride of life. The pride of life. Thinking things God has brought the property, the material things, the job, the career, the business will be able to do what God used to do in your life. That is the pride of life. He says, but I have this charge against you that you have left abandoned the love that you had at first. You have deserted me in your first love. You have abandoned the love. You have deserted God. The moment you begin to put your trust in the things that God brought into your life, you have deserted God. And verse 5 he says, Remember then, from what heights you've fallen, repent, change the inner man to meet God's will, and do the works. Which works? The works of love. And he's saying here, Jesus is saying, yes, do the works you did previously. So it is the works of love that you did previously that committed God to mungu. prosper your life. You did the works of life. You did the works of love. In your days of humility. In your, in your days, your days of littleness. In your days that you had nothing. You did the works of love. And by the works of love. God prospered you. God lifted you. God made you successful. Now you are successful. The works of love. That lifted you. You stopped doing them. From this scripture, you have abandoned your love for God when you stop doing the works of love. You have abandoned love for God when you stop doing the works of love. Now you become lovers 
of pleasure more than lovers of what God. God when you are poor you had nothing for pleasure when you had no business you had nothing for pleasure when you had no money you had nothing for pleasure but now God has brought you money God has made your business to flourish God has increased your income now instead of using your money to love God you are using the money to pesa. live like the hidden. Look at 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. The pride of life. Second Timothy chapter 3. Verses 1 to 4. Are you there? One, two, three, let's read. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents and thankful and holy without natural affection, covenant breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. Lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. When you had nothing, you loved the Lord. Now the wealth that God has brought into your life, instead of using the wealth to love God, now you are using the wealth to love pleasure. When they had nothing, they loved the Lord. They did the works of love. And then God lifted them. God prospered them. God made them to be successful. Now they are successful. Now they are comfortable. They now shift their love from God to the things that God has brought into their life. Now they use those things to live like they they now become lovers of pleasure. Now they can now use the money to party. Now they can use money to buy wine that has alcohol. They are actually now drunkards, but they are hiding in wine. When you are poor, you could afford even juice. Now you are buying wine that has alcohol. Now you are living like the hidden. Lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. The works of love that you did for God to lift you up. Now you are stopped. Now you have arrived. Now you have things. Now you have property. Now you have some little money. You shift your heart from God to the things. You shift your love from God to the things. Now you are using the things to live like the hidden. Now you want to party. Hello? Now you want, you know, now you want to drink. You want to drink. When you are poor, you can't afford anything. You are very committed and very holy. Now prosperity has come. Now you think you don't need to be holy. You don't need to come to church again because you think this prosperity will last without God. Now 
Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of what? God. What brings it? The pride of life. Property has come. Money has come. Income has come. You are now comfortable. Now you shift your heart from God to the things. You shift your love from God to the things. The things you used to do for God, you no longer do them. Why? You have arrived. God spoke to Israel in Jeremiah chapter 2. Jeremiah is this one describing you? A little money, you stop serving God. You had nothing used to come for sanctuary. Now you have a job, you have some little money. Now you have shifted that love for sleep. Now you love sleep because you think you are comfortable. Jeremiah chapter 2. Jeremiah mbili. Verses 2. Mbili mbili. Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus say the Lord, Asema, buwana, I remember thee, the kindness of the youth, the love of thy espouse. There is a time you used to love me when thou wentest after me in the wilderness. Katika nyika, you pursued me in a land that was no son. Israel was holiness unto the Lord. At that time, ule, when you loved me, nipenda, when you pursued after me, niyandama, you lived a holy life. Matakatifu, and the first fruit of his increase, matunda, yake, all that devour him yoke, ilipata, shall offend. Ilisabon. That means anyone that touched God, mungu, anyone that touched them, yeye, offended God. At that time, ule, when they loved God, mungu, when they pursued God, mungu, when they were holy towards God, anyone mungu, that touched them wakusa, negatively, kwa hali ya kinyume, God reacted. Mungu zake. Hey, you are touching my lover. I, mpenzi wangu. I whip you. Na wewe. At that time, ule, anybody that touched Israel offended God. Mungu. Why? Bona. They were in love with God. They mungu. were lovers of God. Mungu. They pursued God. Mungu. Israel was holiness Israel unto the Lord. And the first fruit of his increase, all that wake, devour him shall kutia. offend. Evil shall come upon them, says kutia. the Lord. Anyone that offended or came against Israel, Israel, evil came upon them. You are touching my lover. Evil. Anyone that touched them Yoyote negatively, kinyume, God whipped them. Mungu God punished them. Mungu At that time, ule, all these things are written for our, for our gani, what? Gani, Learning. When they loved God, mungu, God protected them. Mungu when they loved God, mungu, God defended them. Mungu when they loved God, mungu, anyone yoyote ule, that tries to touch against Israel, Israel, they offended God and mungu, God whipped them. Na mungu how can you forget that? Why is how ile How can you forget that? That he protected you. He defended you. Anyone that came against you, he whipped them. All that devour him shall offend. Evil shall come upon them, says the Lord. When you are in love of God, anyone that they intends to do you evil, God whips them. Mungu anapata kuwacharaza. He whips them. Anawacharaza hawa. 
Lovers of God are precious in the eyes of God. Why? There are not many. There are not many. How is your wengi? So God protects them. He defends them like the apple of his eye. Verse 4. He are yet the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob. And all, that, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus say the Lord. What iniquity have your fathers found in me that they are gone far from me and have walked after vanity and have become vain. What evil did your fathers find in me that they left me and began to live like the heat? What evil did they find in me? What? What iniquity have your father found in me that they have gone far from me and have walked after vanity living like the hidden and become vain neither say they where is the Lord that brought us out of the land of Egypt that led us through the wilderness through a land of deserts and of pits through a land of drought and of the shadow of death through a land that no man passed through where no man dwelt and I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof but Lakini, when you entered, ulipo ingia, you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. I brought you to the plentiful country. I brought you to abundance to eat the fruit thereof and pale. the goodness thereof. Pale. Ah, now you have arrived. Sasa you have arrived. Umewasili. Did I make a mistake to bring you to the land of abundance? Did I make a mistake to bring you to the good land precious fruit did I make a mistake to make you comfortable? Did I make a mistake to prosper you, to give you a job, give you a promotion, give you assets, give you business? Because after I've given you all these things, you now leave me. You desert me. You don't love me again. Now you want to live like the hidden. The moment more of your friends are those that are not born again. You are in trouble. The moment a majority of your friends are not born again, very soon you begin to live like them. God is saying, Did I make a mistake? To prosper you, what evil did your fathers find in me? Because I prospered them, brought them to the good land, brought them to abundance, and then they have left me. They no longer love me. They are no longer pursuing after me. They are living like the hidden. Pride of life. It prospers you. Then you reach a level. You think you have arrived. You now live like the hidden. Here we are going hiking. When Sunday, you that had nothing, even the name hiking could not come out of your mouth. Now a little money has entered. Sunday is when you go hiking. That is the foolishness of a human being. To forget God who brought you from the low places, took you to the high places. And now that you are in the high places, you begin to live like the hidden. That is the pride of life. 
You think these things can replace God. You think these things can do what God used to do. No. They will finish. The God who brought them will not bring any more. You will use what you have. The God who used to open doors will not open more doors. The God who gave you favor will not give you more favor. The Lord who gave you ideas will not give you more ideas. The Lord who used to connect you to people will no longer connect you to people. They will finish. One lesson you need to learn from the kingdom of God. Anything God gives you, it must be sustained by God. You leave God, it will leave you. Because you will consume it, more is not coming. And as you are consuming it, more problem, more trouble. God used to protect you. He's no longer defending you. He's no longer protecting you. What you have will finish. Pride of life. You shift your love from God to the things God is saying. Did I make a mistake to prosper you? Did I make a mistake to bring you to abundance? Did I make a mistake to bring you to the good land? You have now defiled it. You now live like the hidden. You party like them. You do idolatry like them. You are no longer holy. You don't listen to their music. And you say, Aye, there is no harm in listening to their music. Who does the music glorify? Every music glorifies somebody. In Matthew chapter 24. Matthew 24. Verses 12. Matthew 24, 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Iniquity. Love for what people call pleasure. But it's sin. And because iniquity, what the, what the world calls pleasure, shall increase, the love of many in the church will wax cold. Why? Believers will want to live like the hidden. You want to live like the hidden. God has lifted you. God has prospered you. Instead of living a holy life, instead of pursuing God, instead of increasing your love for God, now things have come. Now you want to use the things to live like the hidden. What a mockery to God. And God will be asking, did I make a mistake to bring these things into your life? Look at Deuteronomy chapter 8. If you are in this category, change. change. You saw something little and it has entered your head. And now you have shifted focus. Change. Deuteronomy 8 from verse 7. Are you there? Verse 7, let's read. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains, and depths that spring out of the valleys and hills, a land of wheat, and barley, and vines, and the fig trees, and pomegranates, 
a land of oil, olive, and honey. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Thou shalt not lack anything in it. A land whose stones are iron. And out of those is thou mayest dig brass. When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he has given thee. Beware that after all these things have come, beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I commanded this day. Lest when thou hast eaten and a full and a built goodly houses and dwell therein, when thy herds and thy flocks multiply and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thy heart be lifted up. That is the pride of life. Then thy heart be lifted up. And thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. Then thy heart be lifted up, and you forget the Lord. That is the pride of life. God helped you. You built goodly houses. Your silver multiply. Your gold multiply. Your flocks multiply. You have access to it. Now your heart is lifted up. Now you do, you forget God. Now you don't need them anymore. You have the things. Now you don't do the commandments of God. You have the things. Now you don't do the statutes of God. You have the things. So your focus has shifted from God to the things. That is the pride of life. Verse 17. And thou say in thy heart, you don't have even to say with your mouth, just to say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand has gotten me all these things. Ah, now God is not there. Look at the estate I build. Every month I bring in almost 1.5 million. Ah, my brother went arrest. One sickness can collect that estate. One sickness. One sickness from the devil can collect that entire estate to zero. And then. Madai. There are other afflictions. Ile kupigwa kuingine. Money. Pesa. Can no soul. Ezi pata kusuluhisha. You think things can replace God? No. You don't want to learn the hard way. Learn from Scripture. Things can never replace God. Vitu ezi pata kubadilisha mungu. You desert God because of things. You desert God because of money. You desert God because of property. You desert God because you're comfortable. And they say you forget me because of things. Look at verse 15. He says, who led through, through that great and terrible wilderness? Where in were fiery serpents, scorpions, drought, where there was no water? Who brought you forth out water out of the rock of the flint? Who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee to do good at the latter end? Have you forgotten what I did for you in your days of humility, in your days of poverty, when you're homeless, when you had nothing? How I provided for you, how I protected you. Now you have arrived. I'm no longer important. Things have come. God, get out. Things have come in. God, I don't need you. 
And then you say unasema, in your heart verse 17 mwako, Thou say in thy heart My mwako, power and the might of my hand has gotten me this world That is the pride of life but thou shalt remember Utakumbuka the Lord thy God. Bwana Mungu wako. Remember where he has brought you from. Kumbuka mahali aliyekutoa wewe. Remember all these things. Kumbuka haya mambo yote. To God. Ya, ni yake Mungu. And they come from God. Inazuka kwake Mungu. And is God who brought them into your life. Ni Mungu alileta maisha ni mwako. Thou shall remember the Lord thy God. Utakumka bwana Mungu wako. Thou shall remember the Lord thy God. Utakumka Mungu bwana wako. Remember where he's brought you from. Kumbuka alikutoa wapi? Remember how he protected you. Alivyokulinda. Remember how he preserved you. Alipopata kuhifadhi. Remember how he has he has sustained the gift of life in you. Ameamrisha pumzi maishani mwako. He has sustained your sanity. If you are mad, you can you enjoy these things? If you have no life, can you enjoy these things? Only a fool beats his heart and says, See what I've achieved by my power. And God says, Ah, I gave you the breath of life. This one cannot be bought. I gave you the breath of life. A madman cannot enjoy what I've brought into your life. A dead man cannot enjoy that which you have. Thou shall remember the Lord thy God. Remember where he has brought you from. And remember these things come from God through men into your hands. We are only stewards. Only what? Stewards. So when you stop loving God you shift your heart from God to the things you shift your love from God to the things when you stop loving God you stop doing the works of love what are the works of love Matthew chapter 22 or let's look at Mark Mark chapter 12 Mariko kumna mbili. You know when you say, I don't feel like going to church today. Sijisiki kwenda kanisani leo. I'm going to watch TV. Nenda kuangalia runinga. If you didn't have it. Kama ukuwa nayo. Will you watch it? Utaiangutizama. That is still the pride of life. Vuna maishani. If you didn't have it. Kama ukuwa nayo. What will you watch? Utakuwa unatizama nini? Now that you have it, it is now an alternative to the commandments of God. Thou shalt not forsake fellowship. Now you forsake fellowship because you have something that God brought into your life. That thing, you are now using to break the commandment. Mark, Mark, I said Mike, chapter 12, verses 28. And one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he answered them well and asked him which is the first commandment of all and Jesus answered him the first of all the commandments is this hear O Israel the Lord our God is one Lord thou shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart with all thy soul with all thy mind with all thy strength this is the first commandment and the second is like namely this thou shall love thy neighbor as thyself there is no other commandment greater than this this is an order you can't retreat from it this is mandatory for every child of God there is no alternative to it you cannot ignore it and enjoy God thou shall love the Lord thy God with thy heart with thy soul with your mind and with all thy strength 
and it is thy strength that the works of love come in Oh God, I love you with my soul. Good. God, I love you with my mind. Oh, that's lovely. But crown it all. Let's see whether your love is mature. Crown it all. God, I love you with all my strength. It is loving God with your strength where the works of love come in. What is your strength? Your strength is your ability. Your strength is your money. Your strength is your riches. Your strength is your resources. If you love God with your mind, with your heart, your heart is connected to your strength. If you say you love God with your mind, you love God with your soul, and you don't love God with your heart and your strength, then you love God in theory. And that is not true love. Look at what Jesus said through John. What is true love? First John. Chapter 3. Yohana kwanza tatu. First John chapter 3. Yohana kwanza tatu. Verse 17. Kumna saba. Are you there? First John 3. Warako kwanza wa Yohana moja. 17 and 18. Moja kumna tatu. I'm going to read the amplified version. Tafsiri ya pata kufafanuliwa. But if anyone has this world's goods. Yote kishie haya mema. Resources. Rasli mali. For sustaining life. For wisha uhai and sees his brother and fellow believer in need yet he closes his heart of compassion against him how can the love of God live and remain in him little children let us not love merely in theory so it's possible to love God in theory little children let us not love merely in theory or in speech but let us love God number one in deed number two in truth number three in practice and number four in sincerity love God in what? in deed in works love God in works love God in truth love God in practice love God in sincerity Love God in deed, in works. Jesus says, You have abandoned me. You have abandoned me. Go back to the works of love you did previously. Works of love. What are the works of love? Number one, Titan is a work of love. Titan is a work of what? Love. John 3.16 For God so loved the world He gave He gave Giving is a proof you love God Giving is a proof you love God Giving Titan are the works of love they proof you love God God so loved how did he prove he loved the world by works what works he gave his only begotten son Titan and giving is a proof of your love Titan and giving are the works of love they prove your love for God so when the Bible says, posema, love God with your strength, it says love God Penda mungu with your money, na pesa love zako. God Penda mungu with your resources, na love mungu God Penda with your riches. Na How wako. do you love God Penda with mungu these things? Kwa hizi vitu. In tithing, you're zaka. loving God. Penda mungu. In giving, you're loving God. Penda mungu. So by tithing zaka. and giving, you're loving God Penda mungu. with your strength. Yako. Loving God Penda mungu. with your strength is a 
the proof that you are loving God indeed in practice in truth in sincerity are you catching this stuff? God so loved, he did what? What is the proof that God loved? He gave. If you love him, you will love him with your strength. So loving God with your strength is loving God with your tight. Is loving God with your giving. So tightening and giving are the works of love. They prove the sincerity of your love to God. Look at Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter eight. Are you there? Second Corinthians eight. Let's okay, let's begin from verses one. Moreover, brethren, we do you to witness of the grace of God bestowed in the churches of Macedonia how that in the great toy of affliction the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality for to their power I bear record yea and beyond their power they were willing of themselves to do what? to give Praying us with much entreaty that we should receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this they did not as we hoped first, but first gave their own self to the Lord unto us by the will of God. Verse 7. Therefore, as you are bound in everything, in faith, in utterance, in knowledge, in all diligence, in your love to us, see that you are bound in this grace also. Which grace? The grace for giving. I speak not by commandment, but by the occasion of the forwardness of others, and to prove the sincerity of your love. Continue giving. Why? To prove the sincerity of your love. Tighting and giving proves the sincerity of your love. So the Ephesians church, when they prospered, when they succeeded, they stopped tightening, they stopped giving. Now their resources was concentrated on living like the people of the world. When you didn't have anything, you used to tight little, you get 10 bob, you tight, get 100 bob, you tight. By tightening and giving and by serving God, God lifted you up. Now you see difficult of writing a check of 1 million. It's too much. Say, God, you know, I'll be giving you tight of 1,000. Until the tithe of one million is finished. You know, you know you can't do it. Now tithing is difficult. Now the figures have increased. Now you are finding it hard to tithe. There are people who can tithe a thousand. Who will find very difficult to tithe ten thousand. You will count one, two, three, four, five, six. All this. Iote. All this. Iote. All this. Iote. And God say, ah, ah. Did I make a mistake to bring you to that level? Did I make a mistake to bring you to that level? There are people who can tie 10,000. Who can tie 10,000? Fifty thousand. The little little money they can tie. But if they get huge money, they can't tie. 
pride of life majivuno maishani when you are small ulipokuwa mdogo you knew ulijua tithing and giving will make you ane. to prosper now that that you prosper you think you have arrived you don't need god again to get involved in your prosperity atangia kwa ufanisi wako tithing kulipa zaka and giving at the works ni kazi of love ya upendo they are the works of faith ni kazi ya imani and they are still the works of love na bado ni kazi ya they upendo they prove the sincerity of your love na fitisha uhaki ya upendo wako if you are not a tight and a giver Kama you don't sabi, love him haumpendi yeye oh god you know how much i love you and god sana. says in theory kwa katika mdomo tu theory. kwa kusema tu but in practice kwa kuhitika no. hakuna and there are people when god lifted them up mungu anapowainua they stop loving god wanawacha kupenda mungu with their tights they yao, stop loving god with mungu. their giving whatever happens in the house of god it does mungu. not bother them i was umui hawa prove the sincerity of your love ibiti ya uhaki wa upendo wako look at nehemiah chapter 10 angalia nehemiah 10 nehemiah chapter 10 Kitabu cha Nehemiah 10 May you remain small in the eyes of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Prosperity should make you to be more committed to God. Ufanisi basi jitoe mhanga zaidi. Prosperity should make you fear God. Upate kumuogopa Mungu. God you brought me this far. Mungu umenileta ubali huu. I know without you I'll not have come this far. Bila usingekuja ubali huu. And without you I can't stay where I am today. Siwezi kuwa nilipo leo. Nehemiah Kitabu cha Nehemiah 10 10 book of nehemiah chapter 10 kitabu cha nehemiah 10 verse number 38 nehemiah 10:38 and the priests Makohani, the son of aaron wana wa aruni shall be with the levites watakuwa na walawi when the levites take tithes walawi wanachukua fungu la 10 and the levites shall bring up the tithe Wata... of the tithes into the house of our god fungu la 10 kwa mungu mungu wetu to the chambers into the treasure house katika ile nyumba ya hazina for the children of israel wa wana wa israeli and the children of levi na wana wa lawi shall bring the offering of the corn ile bile ke mungu and of the offering of the corn matoleo ile mungano and of the new wine na ile mvinyo mpya and the oil na ile mafuta onto the chambers kwa ile mahala pandani where are the vessels of the sanctuary vyombo madhabahu and the priests na makohani that minister and the potters na wale wa and the singers wa waimbaji and we will not forsake hatutapata kuachilia the house of our god nyumba ya mungu wetu they will bring tithes Watalata zaka and offerings na to the house of god why so that we don't forsake the kuwaza. house of god we mungu. don't desert Tupate the house of god nyumba yake mungu if you are not a tither kama basi wewe sio mlipo zaka giver, na upeani you forsaken the house of god umefarakiana na nyumba yake mungu you deserted god umefarakiana umefarakisha yake mungu the house of god umefarakisha nyumba yake mungu you have what to tight una kile ya kulipa zaka you have what to give una kile cha kupeana but you choose not to tight una chagua usilipe zaka and you choose not to give una chagua usilipe you forsaken the house of god umefarakisha nyumba yake mungu deserted the house of god umefarakisha nyumba yake mungu you deserted god umefarakisha naye mungu In James chapter 2 Yakobo 2 James chapter 2 Yakobo 2 verses 14 The book of James chapter 2 verses 14 Yakobo 2:14 Let's read verses 14 1 2 3 let's go So me What does it profit my brethren If thou if though a man say he has faith and have not works can faith save him faith without works is what imani bila matendo imekufa love without works bila matendo is fake ile basi ni ubandia love upendo without works bila matendo is faith ni mu- is fake ile basi ni muigizo tu love without works upendo bila matendo is theory basi ni, ni theory tu unaongea kwa maneno verse 15 15 
if thy brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food and one of you say unto them depart in peace be warm and filled notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body what does it profit even so faith if it has not worked is dead being alone here a man say here a man may say thou hast faith and I have works show me thy faith without thy works thou will show thee my faith by my works thou believest that there is one God thou doest well the devils also believe and tremble but will thou know O vain man that faith without works is dead was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar seest thou how faith wrought with these works so giving is also a work of faith and giving is also a work of love see as thou our faith wrought with these works and by works was faith made perfect and the scripture was fulfilled which say Abraham believed in God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness and he was called a friend of God you see then how that by works a man is justified not by faith only in theory likewise also was not Rahab the hallowed justified by works when she had received all the messengers and sent them out another way for as the body without the spirit is dead so faith without works is dead also so also love without works is fake giving is a work of faith and giving is a work of love John said, don't love in theory, but love in deed, in works, in truth, in practice, in sincerity. First Timothy, as we round up. First Timothy, chapter 6, verses number 17. First Timothy 6. 17. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high minded nor trust in uncertain riches. Don't trust in them. When you trust in them, that is the pride of life. Tell them not to be high, not to be proud. Not to be high minded. Not to be proud. Not to trust in uncertain riches. But trust in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. And those that trust in the living God and not in the riches, they do good. That they be rich in good works. What are these works? The works of love and what are these works of love that they be ready to distribute be willing to communicate laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life Tell them not to be high-minded, not to be proud, not to put their trust in these riches. No, but let them put their trust in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Let them do good that they that they do good, that they be rich in good works, plural, 
Good what? Matendo mema. Good what? Matendo, works. Matendo plural. Mema kwa wingi. What are these good works? Matendo haya mema ni magani. Tithing. Kulipa zaka. Giving. Kupeana. To the work of God. Kwa kazi yake mungu. Giving. Kupeana. To the projects of God. Miradi yake mungu. Giving to the poor. Kupeana kwa wale maskini. When you are doing that what are you doing Laying up in store for themselves a foundation against the time to come Because you don't know what will come tomorrow But you are laying a good foundation for God to protect you for God to preserve you for God to exempt you for God to keep you alive You are laying a good foundation for yourself against the time to come A time comes when money cannot help you Riches cannot help you Your estate cannot help you Only God You are laying a good foundation against what? The time to come you don't know what will come tomorrow. Nobody knew COVID-19 will arrive in 2020. Nobody knew it will go up to 2021. Nobody knew. Rich nations suffered the most. Laying a good foundation against the time to come. Don't put your trust in these things because the time comes when they cannot help you. Let them be rich in good works, the works of love. The works of what? Love. Let them be willing to distribute. Let them be willing to communicate. Tithing and giving are the works of love.